today on Running to Him. Once the pressure is off, we tend to revert to our old ways. Today's reading is Exodus chapter 8, verses 1 through 15, and we'll be concentrating on verses 4 through 10. Exodus 8, 4 through 10 in the Tanakh read, Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Plead with the Lord to remove the frogs from me to and my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, You may have this triumph over me. For what time shall I plead in behalf of you and your courtiers, for your people, that the frogs be cut off from you and your houses, only to remain in the Nile? Tomorrow, he replied, and Moses said, As you say, that you will know that there is none like the Lord our God. The frogs shall retreat from you and your courtiers and your people, and they shall remain only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron left the Pharaoh's presence, and Moses cried out to the Lord in the manner of the frogs which he had inflicted upon Pharaoh. And the Lord did as Moses asked. The frogs died out in the houses, the courtyards and the fields, and they piled them up in heaps till the land is tank. Now today we move on to the next two plagues, frogs and lice. These two plagues go against the Egyptian gods. The editors of the Jewish Publishing Commentary on Exodus writes this, quote, it is possible that this plague, like the first one, was regarded as a judgment on Egyptian polytheism for a frog-headed goddess named Hek was the consort of the god Knum, who was credited with having fashioned the first man out of clay. She was associated with fertility and was thought to assist women at childbirth. Hence, the plague may have been taken as a retribution for the decree ordering the midwives to kill the newborn males at birth, close quote. Nahum Sarna, Exodus, the JPS Torah Commentary, 1991, page 40. God uses object lessons when he teaches man. The parables which Jesus taught are practical examples of how God communicates truth. Likewise, we humans generally learn better when we can associate truth with a story. In the television program Star Trek, The Next Generation, Captain Picard is stranded on a planet with an alien starship commander. Their means of communication are complete opposites until finally Picard realizes that this alien's culture uses the historical sources in their communication to convey the truth quickly. For example, suppose we wanted to convey a feeling of denial or betrayal. In that case, we could either tell the entire story of Peter's denial of Christ, taking several minutes to do so, or just say, Peter in the courtyard. People who know the story will immediately recognize the application. When Picard figured out his communication problem, he and the alien commander beat the monster. Now, this type of communication requires that we, quote, know our history, unquote. Unfortunately, most of us are lacking in our understanding of biblical history, including myself. When I think about the believers in the early church and the knowledge they had about scriptures and integrating that scripture into their lives, I find myself thinking how woefully inadequate I am. Possibly my inadequacy is the reason I fall into the trap of committing the same sins, repeatedly. We as humans tend to revert to the good old days as soon as the pressures for change wear off. For example, many p criminals in prison, quote, reform, unquote, while behind bars. But as soon as they are released, they revert back to their own ways. This is what happened to Pharaoh. There is a method which Christians can use to help prevent them from falling back when the pressure is off. The early church created a short prayer to apply to Paul's admonition to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It is called the Jesus Prayer. The words of the prayer are this, Lord Jesus, Son of God, forgive me a sinner. As this prayer is repeated slowly under our breath, it removes our focus from the temptation and refocuses our mind on God the Father and Christ. It is best to pray this prayer regularly in our lives, repeating it often and not just when we are in trouble. It keeps the pressure on us to change with the Holy Spirit's help and not fall back on trusting our abilities. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.